Good morning. As we are fast approaching the uh, season of Lent uh, this week, I thought it would be good if we had a couple of days when we thought about the ministry of John the Baptist. Uh, John the Baptist, of course, was born uh, three months after Jesus was conceived by Mary, um, and therefore he was, I suppose he spent his entire life at six months older than Jesus <laughs> and his cousin. And he knew Jesus very well, I'm sure, although they lived in different parts of the country. They would have pro probably met at Passovers um, and other festivals in Jerusalem. And I'm sure he'd heard the stories ar around the birth of Jesus from his auntie or cousin. Well, she was a second cousin. Anyway, I'm not very good at relationships making sure we know. Anyway, they were related. And sometimes it's very difficult to recognise in someone we're related to something special. And John was out there in the wilderness by the Jordan um, baptising and people came from all over to him. They were attracted to him. He was an amazing orator and uh, we'll perhaps look at some of his teachings, but I was focusing on the one phrase that comes up in each of the baptism stories of Jesus coming to him. And uh, Matthew talks about John not wanting to baptise Jesus because he didn't think Jesus needed to be baptised because he was already righteous. He knew Jesus was different. Um, he had come to baptise those who had repented of their sins and were getting ready for the coming of the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Promised King. And John knew Jesus was different. He didn't want to baptise him. But Jesus said, let's do it. It's, it befits us to do this. And I think it's because Jesus identified himself with all of mankind. He identified himself as a, a child of Adam and Eve by descent through Mary. And he's, when he was baptised, it says in Luke 3, uh, 20, 21 and 22, after he'd been baptised and he was standing in the river praying, presumably he was immersed and he came up out of the water and the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. This is my Son. So the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. Now the Holy Spirit, we, we know it's very difficult to see the Holy Spirit. We can see what he does. Jesus himself described it in John 3 as um, the Spirit is like the wind. Uh, you can see the effect of the wind, but you can't see the wind. You can feel the effect of the wind, but you can't see the wind. You can see it blowing in the trees. You can see the wind is active, but you can't see the wind. And it's the same with the Spirit. Most of the time you can't actually see the Holy Spirit. You can see what the Holy Spirit is doing and how he is affecting people but you can't see the Holy Spirit. But there are instances when the Holy Spirit becomes visible. One of them is in uh, the day of Pentecost, when the wind blew, when they were all in that upper room, and there were like tongues of fire resting on each one of them. They weren't tongues of fire. They were like tongues of fire. And this here, in every mention of it, the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus in a physical form, in a bodily form, in a physical form, in a visible form, like a dove. Now, I don't know quite what, what the description means when it says like a dove. I know nearly every representation we have of the Holy Spirit is either tongues of fire or 
a dove. But it doesn't say that the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. It says like a dove, in bodily form, like a dove. And it's a it's a simile, it's not a it's not a description. And it takes some thinking really. What is it about a dove? I mean, you it could have been described the Holy Spirit could have been described coming down like an eagle or like a sea seagull or like a sparrow. But the bird that's used is a dove. And it's interesting if you do a study on the word dove in the Old Testament, there are quite a few mentions of doves. Um, there was the dove that flew out that um, Noah sent out from the ark. First a raven and then a dove. That may be, may be significant, I don't know. As you meditate on this and pray, the Lord may well use that picture to speak to you uh, of some aspect that this vision of the Holy Spirit is meant to give us. But also the dove was used to describe women uh, predominantly. It's used in Song of Solomon, it's used in Jeremiah and in Isaiah um, of the gentleness, the beauty of women and the gentleness of women. And so we have two images of, or likenesses of the Holy Spirit when he appeared in bodily form. Like fire, like a dove. And those two aspects of the Holy Spirit are so important that yes, there is a, there's a real sense in which the Holy Spirit um, inspires and gives life, vigour, power, strength, uh, burning as fire. But also, we need never to be afraid of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is as gentle and as beautiful as a dove. We shouldn't restrict him in our thinking to being dove-like because he's also fire-like. But he's not. He's dangerous, but he's, he's beautiful. He's beautiful and gentle. And I don't really want to say any more. I just want to say, think about the Holy Spirit today. Think about, we don't often focus on the Holy Spirit because his work is to focus on Jesus and point us to Jesus. And his work is always to lift up Jesus. And so it was here. He came to the Lord Jesus as he was baptised to confirm to John who Jesus was. Have a great day. We'll think some more about this tomorrow, I think. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.